ministers, service chiefs, industry leaders, members of BSI, distinguished guests, Assalamu alaikum and a very good afternoon. Let me begin by thanking the organizers of the Indian Defence Conclave 2022. It gives me the opportunity to share my thoughts on your theme, Defence Cooperation through Collaboration. It is very topical and timely. The Indian Ocean region has the largest number of ungoverned maritime space. This leads to nefarious elements operating undetected. No country can alone ensure its own security interests. For lasting peace, it is imperative that countries cooperate to deal with the common threats they face. From a strategic point of view, I believe the Indian Ocean region is the next global frontier for competition. Although some pre-existing or natural geopolitical fault lines keep re-emerging in Europe and parts of Asia, it is the Indian Ocean region and accessibility to this maritime space that will be at the front and centre of global geopolitics. I am mindful that I am addressing a highly intelligent and informed audience. I am sure all of us here would agree that no single power can dominate this space. A determining factor will be the role major powers play to ensure a free, open, safe and secure Indian Ocean. I wholeheartedly believe that India as a leading power has a larger role to play. It is imperative for the community of Indian Ocean nations to ensure that a coordinated effort is made to keep the Indian Ocean rules-based and conflict-free. We must respect each other's aspirations and concerns and share a common desire to maintain Indian Ocean as a global common and a source for nations to prosper and achieve their full potential. The question that is before us is how do we foster cooperation and increase collaboration in such a competitive era when the stakes are so high? I would like to say that defence cooperation should not just be a concept. It should not be stuck in bureaucracy. It should be action-oriented, promptly executed and results-based. A key aspect of cooperation should be for larger nations to tailor their engagements to the specific needs of their smaller partners. It is paramount that larger powers keep the discourse and engagements relevant to the needs of their smaller partners. A case on point is the Honourable Prime Minister Modi's swift action in providing COVID vaccines under the Sagar policy to its neighbours. Many of the strategic priorities of smaller nations revolve in the non-traditional security realm. If there is a disconnect between the benefits of the defence cooperation relationship and the most pressing challenges of the smaller nations, it is likely that the smaller nations will look elsewhere for help. Larger nations should not assume that having the greatest military might make them the most favoured or feared. It is how the relationship is managed that matters most. 
for resource-challenged smaller nations, defense and security requirements compete with economic and socio-political interests. Understanding the interplay of this mix of dynamics is important while dealing with smaller nations. No nation should expect from another nation to cooperate on security matters alone if that nation is not engaged with the other in areas they, as they perceive as essential or critical. If major powers are not interested in the economic prosperity of smaller nations, its desperations, its safety and well-being, safety and well-being, its social harmony or the political aspirations, the smaller nation session as a reliable security as a reliable security partner. I admire India's drive to make the Colombo Security Conclave a substantive security entity. We would very much like to see it develop and grow into a robust response element powered by our collective competence and alignment of interests. Initially, we started the Colombo Security Conclave with four pillars of cooperation, which are security oriented. However, we agreed to add HADR as a pillar of cooperation because for countries like the Maldives, HADR is not just a civil defense matter, but a security matter. I believe we should invest in responsive and flexible partnerships such as the CSC while working with, within bilateral and multilateral cooperation frameworks. India and Maldives share a unique relationship. Bilateral relations will remain our strongest bond. As the excellencies President Ibrahim Mohammed, Prime Minister Narendra Modi reiterated during President Solis' recent visit to India, the Maldives India Defense and Security Partnership is time tested and is the leading example of regional cooperation. This partnership is a force for stability in the Indian Ocean region. We believe India understands our unique challenges and needs. Our relationship is based on mutual trust. It is a relationship that is evolving and defense cooperation is central to that relationship. I am confident that our defense and security partnership will only grow stronger in the future. In any collaborative effort, trust and information are key. We must be willing to share pertinent information, information that is substantive and information the other finds useful. Let me conclude my remarks by saying we are always stronger together. Participative, inclusive and open forums to discuss our shared challenges and prospective solutions contribute to collaboration and understanding the unique requirements for continued cooperation. Once again, Thank you for the opportunity and I wish everyone a productive day ahead and a successful conclave. Wassalamu alaikum and thank you.